Hall. This is your host, Hilary Sundberg. I'm so happy to be joining you today uh, for our virtual service. I'm so excited uh, to see what, uh, what the service has in store for all of us today. If you are watching with us on YouTube, if you want to put a, a leave a comment of where, you know, uh, where you're watching from, um, maybe something um, that was a blessing to you this week or something you're looking forward to for next week, just leave a comment. Uh, so that way we can be um, connecting with each other through the comments while the service is going on and create a little extra family connection that way. That would be awesome. Um, I don't know about you, but I had a pretty good week this week. I hope that you did too. Um, you know, the weeks we've, we're getting closer and closer to Christmas and Advent season. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, so let's just see what Jesse, our worship leader has in store for us. And I'll see you again in a little bit. Happy Sunday. Welcome to worship. Listen, turn the volume up. Let's worship together. All right, here we go. When night has fallen, when fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and won't let go. Feel it break now like an echo. Your love is holding on and won't let go. I feel it break now like an echo, echo in my soul. So, in every season, you keep repeating promises to me. Yeah. No, there's no stopping when you have started until it's complete when my mind says i'm not good enough god you're enough for me i've decided i'm not giving up you won't give up on me you won't give up on me your love is holding on never gonna let go I feel it break now like an echo Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it break now like an echo Echo in my soul Yeah Soul Echo in my soul Yeah Soul Says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me, you won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it break now like an echo. Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking now, breaking now, breaking now Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking now like an echo Your love, your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking now like an echo Echo in my soul Say Soul Echo in my soul Soul Yeah It's so good to be back with you again You know, Psalm 34 says that I will praise God no matter what happens as we worship this morning, I want to invite you to lift your hands, lift your hearts. This is my prayer in the desert, 
When all that's within me feels dry This is my prayer and my hunger in me My God is the God who provides This is my prayer in the fire In weakness and hunger or pain There is a faith proof and more than gold So refine me, Lord, through the flames And I will bring grace, I will bring grace No weapon formed against me shall remain And I will rejoice, I will declare God is my victory and He is here my God is here This is my prayer in the battle When victory is still on its way I am a conqueror and co heir with Christ So firm on this promise I stand yes. I will bring praise, I will bring praise No weapon formed against me shall remain And I will rejoice, I will declare God is my victory and He is here God is here So all of my life in every season you are still God I have a reason to sing and I have a reason to worship oh, 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 oh all of my life in every season you are still God and I have a reason to sing Yes, I have a reason to worship Sing all, all of my life In every season you are And I have a reason to sing Yes, I have a reason to worship Sing all of my life, yes You are still God I have a reason to worship I have a reason to worship yes. And I will bring praise I will bring praise No weapon formed against me shall remain And I will rejoice I will declare yeah, God is my victory And He is there I will bring praise, I will bring praise No weapon form, and I will rejoice I will declare, God is my victory in His hands Our God is here oh. This is my prayer in the harvest When favor and providence flow I know I'm filled to be emptied again So the seed I received I will sow Faithful God is. Oh, walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall, but you have never failed. Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle is won 
For you have never failed me yet Promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence you never fail me yet Ooh. Ooh. And I know the night won't last Keep me, the word will come to pass My heart, my heart will sing Praise again. Oh, 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 Jesus, you're still enough. You keep me, keep me within your love. Oh, my heart will sing your praise again. Yes, you promise. Promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You'll never fail me yet Time and time again Oh, yeah Oh, say I see I've seen you move You move the mountains And I believe I'll see you do it again You made a way When there was no way and I believe I'll see you do it again I see you move You move the mountains And I believe yeah, I'll see you do it again Oh, yeah I see you move Yeah, yeah, yeah I see you move you move the mountains And I believe I'll see you do it again Oh, and I believe I'll see you do it again I'll see you do it again I'll see you do it again. I'll see you do it again. Oh. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You never, you never fail me yet. Oh, oh, oh. this is my confidence. Yes. I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence. 
you'll never fail me yet. And I never will forget it. So you'll never fail me yet And I never will forget Yes, you never fail me and I never will forget oh. One. Hello again. So we're at that point in the service. Um, in just a moment, it'll be time to give for our tithes and offerings, if that's something that you're wanting to do this week. Um, so in a moment, if you want to just look at the screen, there will be information up for you to see how you can give to the church. Um, and there are a number of ways you can do that. And also um, a lot, I think it's half of the money that comes to the church also is donated to our Something to Eat Food Bank program, which has been feeding families during the pandemic. So you can keep that in the back of your mind as well. That's something that's really helpful and really cool that our church has been involved in for the past few months. Um, also, again, feel free to leave a comment in the, the comment section if you're watching on YouTube. And if you want to post a selfie, please do that. Uh, we would love to see how you're worshiping with us today. So you can post it on Facebook or Instagram and tag us. If you're on Facebook, that's um, at ECN Toronto, or on Instagram, it's ECN.to. Um, yeah, so please, if you get the chance to post that selfie or leave that comment, that would be great. And um, if you feel led or you're able to give some money to the church or to the food bank uh, this week, that would be great. Um, so I guess we'll be ready for the message, and I'll see you at the end. Good morning again. It's so good to see you again today. And before I begin my message, I just wanted to invite you again and remind you again about our FACES um, meeting on Wednesday nights. Love to have you join us. Um, as the more the merrier. We haven't had a chance in a long time to physically meet together in the building. And so this is a chance for us to see each other's faces and maybe catch up on some things and pray together as well. Um, and it's a good time. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a, an informal time, but a, a, a one of my favorite times. And so don't miss it. Uh, if we haven't seen your face on there yet, uh, we miss you and it's and, and we're looking forward to seeing you. and for some who have been there once or twice but, but we haven't seen you since we, we're missing you as well we would love you to join us uh, this Wednesday night and every Wednesday night on our faces program because if we can't be together on Sundays it's important for us to take those uh, to be intentional uh, to take those opportunities and uh, to, to be together and to connect each other and to hear each other's voices and to just validate each other and say I hear you I see you I'm praying for you I'm encouraging you that's what we want to do. So join us on Wednesday Night for Faces. Um, it's an important part of what it means to be an online church during these difficult times. So uh, we need, uh, we really need you. And we're looking forward to seeing you with us um, on Wednesday night. We'll send out the links. If you haven't been getting the links, send me an email or a text. And I'll make sure that you get the proper information for Wednesday night. And we'll look forward to having you with us. But... Today we're continuing in a series on, on Gideon the Mighty Warrior. Last week we started by looking at the mindset of the Mighty Warrior and we found that Gideon, when we found him in Judges chapter 6, he was hiding in a wine press because the armies, the Midianite armies were overwhelming, they were overpowering, they had been uh, you know, oppressing them and stealing all their crops and, and they were, you know, it's been happening for seven years. And, and so he was in this, he was hiding in this wine press when God came to him and called him a mighty warrior. And we looked at the mindset of the mighty warrior that God sees us differently than we see ourselves. That Gideon said, man, I'm the least of my family. My family's the least of my tribe. Why are you calling me? And God says, man, start with whatever strength you have. I'm going with you. Don't worry about it. So last week, 
We saw how God came to Gideon and how he comes to us when we feel overwhelmed and when we feel like hiding and still comes to us and sees us differently and calls us a mighty warrior and knows what we are capable of and calls us to something bigger than our circumstances, steps us, helps us to step out of those moments of being overwhelmed and into something much bigger. But, but uh, Gideon, you know, didn't immediately become that mighty warrior. I mean, that, that, that inferiority complex was deeply set in his heart and mind. And so today, we want to look at the second uh, series, message in our series called The Making of a Mighty Warrior and see the things that happened in Gideon's life that, that took him from, from being the one hiding and cowering in the wine press to really embodying uh, the, what it means to be a mighty warrior. And so today, we're going to see the three important steps of, of the making of a mighty warrior. Let me read for you today uh, some scriptures. I want to read from Judges chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 17 through 27. Follow along at home if you can uh, on your apps or your Bibles. But I'm reading from the New International Version. Judges chapter 6 verses 17 through 27. Gideon said this, if, I, if now I have found favor in your eyes, he's talking to the Lord, Give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring you my offering and set it before you. And so the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Gideon went in, prepared a young goat, and from an ephah of flour he, he made bread without yeast, putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot. He brought them out and offered them to him under the oak. The angel of the Lord, an angel of God said to him, take the meat and the unleavened bread, place them on this rock and pour the broth over them. And Gideon did so. With the tip of his staff that was in his hand, the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread. Fire flared from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread and the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, Ah, sovereign Lord, I have seen the face. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day it stands in Ophrah of the Abazites. That same night, the Lord said to him, take the second bull, or actually the full-grown bull, from your father's herd, the one seven years old. Tear down your father's altars to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of this height. Using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down, offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took 10 of his servants and did as the Lord told him. Let's pray. Father, teach us today what it means uh, to be a mighty warrior and the making of a mighty warrior. And as we hear your word and, 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 and reflect on your scriptures and your message to us today, will you also encourage us along that journey? That we can, uh, while in this year and times of being so overwhelmed, can, can follow that path of Gideon from our place of hiding to becoming the mighty warrior you're calling us to be. Teach us what that is all about. Show us the way. Uh, may your, your message be clear to us today. In your name we pray. Amen. So here's what happened. So Gideon, he was hiding in the wine press. And God comes to him and says, Hey, Gideon, I'm thinking you different than you're thinking of yourselves. You, you say that you're the least of the least, but I say you're a mighty warrior. And I want you to go fight these armies and I will go with you. And so Gideon, all right, he accepts that, but he says, hey, I'm going to need a sign. I want to make sure this really is you. I mean, after all, I am the least of my family, and my family is the least in my tribe. So before I go out and do these crazy things, I really want to make sure it really is you. You're going to have to prove to me that it's really you. You're going to have to prove to me that you really are going to go with me. You're going to have to let me know that I really am hearing your voice. So Gideon asks for a sign. He says, 
If I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that is really you talking to me. So here I just want to talk. Today we want to look at three steps uh, in the making of a mighty warrior. Step one is discernment. It's always a good idea to stop and take a moment to discern what God is trying to say and to ask, am I really hearing God in this moment or is it something else? God, is this really you? Too often in our world, too often in our own lives, uh, many things have been done over the years in the name of God that had nothing to do with God's will or purpose in, the wor in this world, clearly out of line with, with what God would want. And so many times people have said, hey, God said this or God said that. And you look at it and you say, man, I, that doesn't sound like the God I know. And so it's important for us at the very beginning of any type of transformation, life journey, facing our challenges, fighting against enemies to stop and ask the question, God, is this really you? So Gideon asks for a sign. Now it it wasn't an easy sign. I mean, it, it took him a while. He went to prepare an offering to bring it uh, to the to, to the to the Lord, uh, the angel of the Lord, and, and it, it didn't happen quickly. He couldn't just go inside and heat something up in the microwave like maybe we could do now. I mean, he had to go through the whole process. It says he prepared he prepared a young goat. What does that mean? Well, it means he had to butcher it. It means he had to slaughter it. It means he had to butcher it. It means he had to prepare that whole thing because they didn't have refrigerators and it wasn't ready to go. So he had to go out into the flock, choose one, choose a, a, a young goat and bring it in and butcher it and prepare it. Uh, he had to make... Uh, he had to make some bread. Now, it was unleavened bread, so they didn't have to wait for it to rise. But still, he had to go find the flour and to mix it all up. And he had to make the bread and, and bake the bread and prepare all that. That's going to take time. And so he goes through all of that. He puts in the effort. And he puts it, and he does all of that. And he brings the, the bread, brings the whole thing, the meat and the bread and the broth, back to the angel of the Lord. And he says, here is my offering to you. The angel of the Lord says this, okay, take the bread, take the meat, put it out on this rock, take the broth, pour it over the top of it. And then the angel of the Lord touches it with his staff and fire burns everything up. Fire flared and consumed both the meat and the bread. And then in that moment, Gideon knew that it really was the Lord who was speaking to him, that the message came from God himself. That's how he knew he could climb out of the wine press. That's how he knew he could face the enemy. That's how he knew it didn't matter if he was the least of the least. That's how he knew it didn't matter the size of the army. That's how he knew it really was the voice of God that he heard. That's how he knew he really was a mighty warrior because he stopped and he said, God, is this really you? Whatever difficult times would come in the future, whenever he would find himself in the midst of a battle, whenever doubts would creep in wondering what he's getting himself into, he could always think back to the fire. I met with God. I heard his voice. God called me a mighty warrior. God gave me a mission. God had told me he'd be with me every step of the way. And I saw the fire. And I saw it burn. Now, nothing can stop me now. The question is, how do we do that today? I mean, how do we discern today? What does that look like in 2020? Are we supposed to go in and make some bread and, and, and slaughter a goat that we don't have in our backyards? What are we supposed to do? Well, the first thing is to pray. Uh, talk with God. Wrestle with it. If there's something that God is talking to you in this don't miss your moment time of our life, if God is saying something to you and it's a big thing, a life-changing thing, like climbing out of a wine press, doing something drastically different, answering God's call, taking a step of faith, fighting against an enemy, overcoming any circumstances, if it's any of that, pray about it. Talk to God about it. You don't have to be in a hurry. Just talk to God whatever time it takes. God, I don't know what this is all about. 
I don't know what you're saying to me. I'm not sure I'm hearing this right. God, tell me what you want me to do. Open the Bible and read it and let God speak to you through the Bible. Have someone pray with you. Talk to someone else. Say, hey, I'm thinking about this. What do you think this is? Is God saying this to me? Let's pray about this together. Wrestle with it some more. Go through that whole process. And God is faithful to us to answer that, to lead us and to guide us. A few weeks ago, we were, we were talking about, about the, 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 the Trinity and, and the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, excuse me, and the role of the Holy Spirit is to be the one who teaches us all things, who speaks to us and leads us and guides us, to be that voice that says, this is the way, walk in it. It's the Holy Spirit who will answer that question. It's the Spirit of God within us who will teach us and guide us and empower us for whatever we hear God say. I had an example of this. Um, as many of you know or may or may not know, um, in response to George Floyd's tragic death, that really hurt me, gripped me like it did many of us. And I was feeling this sense of, well, now what? How do I, what, how do I respond to it? And, and there were a lot of other people in the Church of the Nazarene, our denomination across North America, who were thinking the same. And, and there were a group of pastors and professors and district superintendents that decided to come together and, and, and become a group called the Now Movement, uh, a, a group of, of Nazarenes on the way, is where the word now comes from, to deal with uh, a, a racial injustice in culture, in society, and inside the church. And when the invitation came to me, it was actually our district superintendent that suggested to me that I get involved with this. And, and, and I was, my first response was, man, I've got enough other stuff to do. I'm busy enough. I have enough things to do. But as pastors in the Church of the Nazarene, we're often asked to be involved in different things on our district, on our region, in different kinds of roles. Um, and so we do those different things at different times. And so this was kind of one of those times and I was getting ready to say no. But I stopped to say, God, can you show me your will in all this? Because this is something I'm passionate about. This is something that's growing in my heart. This is something that's important to me. And as I was reading on the day I was supposed to make the decision, and I felt like I probably was going to say no because I didn't have felt, you know, I already have enough other things to do. I was wrestling with it. I was praying with it. And I got out my iPad that has some different um, Bible study plans that I go to. I bounce around from different ones. And there was this one that I said, this is the one I should read today. And when I opened it up and when I read it, the scripture was from Esther chapter four. And the scripture said, who knows, but that God has placed you here for such a time as this. And this, that's the time when Esther was trying to decide whether she was supposed to go in and talk to the king and take that, that, that risky step. And, and Mordecai said to her, who knows, but maybe this is why you're here in the first place. And as I was trying to contemplate something and been wrestling with it for a while and trying to make a decision, God spoke to me in that scripture, in that way, in a very clear way that day. And so I know this is what I was supposed to do and where I was supposed to get involved. And so it's one of the things that I do now as part of a part of my, uh, every now and then I'm on a conference call with talking to people about how we can, or a Zoom meeting about how we can uh, help the churches in the states um, deal with racial injustice and bring healing to our congregation. Uh, and and it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge undertaking. And I feel like Gideon, like it's too big. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. But I could hear God's voice say, I am calling you. I am sending you for such a time as this. And that's the process we go through. That's the process we go through. Whenever we're, we're wrestling with something, step one to becoming a mighty warrior, the making of a mighty warrior is to discern, to stop and say, God, is this really you? And, and if we can't get that discernment or confirmation, then we just, kind of, we don't, we don't, we don't rush ahead because we want to get, we don't want to get ahead of God. We don't want to fall behind God, but we take the time to discern and say, God, can you show me the way? But when God says clearly, this is the way walk in it, we say yes and follow wherever he leads. 
And just like Gideon, for the rest of his days, could remember the fire and know that it's exactly that God had called him, then we can also remember the confirmation God has given us. And we can, we can stay the course regardless of what comes. So step number one in the making of a mighty warrior, discernment. Stop and listen and hear what God has to say and confirm it. Confirm it. Step number two. Step number two is surrender. Another big word. Let me read you again verses 25 and 26 from Judges chapter 6. The same night the Lord said to Gideon, take the second or, or full-grown bull from your father's herd, the one that is seven years old. Tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of this height. Using the word, the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down, offer the second bull as a burnt offering. Here's why this is important. I mean, you remember the reason why the Israelites were here in the first place, the reason why the Midianite armies were, were oppressing them, the reason why uh, uh, the, the Gideon had to hide in the wine press because of all the armies that were oppressing them goes back to the fact that the Israelite people had not been obedient to God. They'd been disobedient to God. In fact, that was the very first answer that the angel came and brought to Gideon, uh, brought to the people when they called out to God. He said, man, I brought you out of Egypt. I brought you into this place. I told you not to to to, uh, to worship their, their gods and their idols, but you're doing it anyway. You didn't listen to me. So the reason why they were in this place in the first place, the reason why they were being oppressed was because of their own disobedience of worshiping the other idols and the other gods. The gods that they were talking about, as we read in this passage of scripture, were Baal and Asherah, were often kind of a, a male and female uh, together. They were the fer fertility gods that the, that, that, that the Canaanite people around the Israelites had worshipped for many years. And they and to worship them, there were a lot of different ways people worshipped them, but occasionally it would, uh, to worship Baal involved child sacrifice. And on a regular basis, worshipping Asherah would involve temple prostitutes, or, 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 or ritual, uh, 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 ritual sex in the, in the temples, sexual rites. And so it was, it was, it was not, it was immoral. It was, it was, it was wrong. And, and, and they had been doing that and, and, and following those gods and worshiping in that way. And, and, and now God comes to Gideon and says, now, if you're going to climb out of this wine press, and if you're going to go do what I've called you to do, then you've got to make things right. You can't keep doing the things that got you here and that got you in trouble in the first place. So he says, prepare a sacrifice, tear down the altar of Baal, cut down the Asherah pole, build a proper altar and put that full grown bull on top of it. And the wood you're going to use to burn it is from those things that you just tore down and offer that bull as a sacrifice. Get rid of the old. Bring in the new. The first enemy we need to fight and the making of becoming a, a, a mighty warrior is the enemy within. We need to get rid of the false gods. We need to confess the sins in our lives. We need to, to rid ourselves of the things that defeat us spiritually. We need to, set, to surrender all areas of disobedience and give ourselves over 100% to God. Step two is surrender. You see, we cannot fight spiritual battles. We cannot win huge spiritual victories. We cannot claim the promised land with a disobedient heart. So my question to you, has there ever been something in your life that keeps you defeated spiritually? Is it a bad attitude? Is it hanging on to resentment? It is, a is it a temptation that you, that you always give into? Is there an error in your life where you know you're disobedient? Is there a sin in your life that, that you are putting up with? Before we can defeat the enemies in our lives, we need to tear down the altars to the false gods and confess the sins in our lives and build a new altar to God. Easier said than done. Easier said than done. But here's the promise. 
Here's the scriptural reality and the scriptural promise. That this is exactly what Jesus promises to do for us and in us. The only way we can tear down the old and bring in the new is to put our faith and trust in Jesus. 1 John 1, 9 says this, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He'll do it if we confess it. He'll wipe away all the old things. He'll cut down, tear down the one altar and cut down the, the Asherah poles. He'll do that for us. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And so the very essence of our faith and relationship with Jesus accomplishes within us what God called Gideon to do and brings about that transformation to a victorious life, to become a mighty warrior. The things that we wrestle with in our lives, the sins that entangle us and the things that hinder us, Jesus comes to set us free from those. Jesus comes into our lives and said, man, if you, if you confess your sins, I'm faithful and just. I'll forgive you of your sins and I'll cleanse you and the old will be gone and the new will come and you'll be able to claim that, claim that title, mighty warrior of God. Step number two is surrender. Step number one, discernment. Step number two is surrender. Step number three in the making of a mighty warrior is this. Chapter six, verse 27 says this. So Gideon took 10 servants and did as the Lord told him. Step three, obedience. So what are we waiting for, mighty warrior? Do you need to pause and ask God for discernment? Do you need to surrender something in your life to tear down the old and bring in the new? Do you need to confess your faith and declare your faith in Jesus so that he can do that within you? Well, step three is obedience. Why not start right now? Why not start today? Mighty warrior. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the clarity of your word today and for speaking to us about what it means to become a mighty warrior, to take us from hiding in that wine press to the victory, the victorious life that you have for us. Help us to discern. Help us to hear your voice and know when it is we're hearing your voice and follow you in obedience. Help us to surrender to you and, 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 and allow you to cleanse us of the old and bring about the new, to take away every sin that entangles and everything that hinders and make us new creatures in Christ. And help us to be obedient. Not wait till tomorrow, but to say yes to you today. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you, mighty warrior. everybody um if you get a chance this week and you want to join us wednesday night at seven on zoom for our faces session where we get to uh basically just kind of laugh and make fun of each other for an hour and then pray at the end so it's actually a really fun 
uh, time and it's I really encourage it for people who are able to do that. Wednesday night at 7 p.m. the Zoom link will come to you through an email from my dad, Pastor Bill. So if you get the chance to be involved in that this week, you really should do it. Um, yeah, and I just hope that you enjoyed the service. I hope that you got to feel um, how much we care about each and every one of you at Emmanuel Church. And um, yeah, I hope that you have a really great week and I'll be praying for all of you this week and I'll, I'll see you again in, I guess, one week from today. <laughs>